Everything you do is being criminalized. For instance, if you don't handle your bank deposits and withdrawals in a certain way, you can be imprisoned and your entire bank balance can be confiscated. If you happen to transfer an amount over $10,000, you will be reported by your bank to law enforcement as a criminal suspect for nothing more than having and moving $10,000. If you transfer your funds in smaller amounts, you can be accused of trying to avoid the $10,000 reporting rule and you can be imprisoned and your bank account can be confiscated because you transferred amounts less than $10,000 at a time. And that's been defined by your government as money laundering, a crime. This is real. They're actually confiscating property when they think you have too much, prosecuting you when you don't have enough. Many things that normal citizens do with their money every day have been arbitrarily classified as crimes. And whenever crimes are involved, confiscations and prosecutions are right behind. Criminalization of your harmless behavior is a favorite pastime of your elected officials and public servants. Your personal management of your personal property, whether that's money, land, your car, or credit card, has been regulated by tens of thousands of laws. They don't teach those laws in school. They don't provide convenient access to those laws online, but they tell you that your ignorance of those tens of thousands of laws is no excuse for violating them. Prosecutors like to brag that because there are so many laws, they could prosecute any American on three crimes a day any time they wish. I promise you, you are not compliant with the law. I promise you, you are a criminal according to our current legal framework. And this is what so many people seem to have a hard time believing. If you are charged with a crime in the United States, you are five times more likely to be convicted and imprisoned for that crime than in any other country in the world. You can point out any authoritarian police state warlord dictatorship on the planet and the USA has more people per capita locked up in prisons than that country. Five times more on average. The United States is the imprisonment capital of the world, with 5% of the world's population and 25% of the world's prisoners. So this nonsense of the United States being the world's most free and open democracy is what propagandists call the big lie. The United States is neither free nor open. So how have we lost so many of our freedoms? Our public servants and bureaucracies no longer seem to be concerned about protecting our freedoms and serving the public. They now seem to have the idea that they are supposed to make money from us. In government, that's not hard. They simply take it by force. If you could do that, you would probably look for new ways to do that every day, just like government is doing to us now. One of the easiest ways to rob people is to call them a criminal. You see, no one in society seems to care if you rob or tax a criminal. And when government calls you a criminal, everyone else just goes along with that. So government constantly and continually makes laws and regulations so they can call more people criminals and take more money from more people every time they criminalize more things. Penalty and confiscation revenues are now a major portion of most federal, state, and local government budgets. Permits, licenses, penalties, fines, fees, confiscations, and taxes are all the same thing to government. More for them, less for you. Of course, they'll pass some of this money back to you in petty benefits just to make sure you keep voting for this system. Whether you get government benefits or not, you are throwing a major portion of your income down the black hole called government, and they are constantly changing the rules to raise the ante. There is no limit to government greed. Institutions have no morality. Taking your money is good, not taking your money is bad. Without some very vigorous pushback, we will shortly have absolutely nothing left for ourselves out of what we earn. Millions of people are already at that stage. 
If you think someone is a criminal just because government calls them a criminal, you are part of the problem. That is no longer the case. If you think someone is a suspect just because government calls them a suspect, you are part of the problem. Government is creating a new criminal offense literally every day, more than 400 a year, every year. And the rate of criminalization of normal harmless behavior is accelerating as fast in the USA as ever has happened in any totalitarian regime in history. Government turns people into criminals for profit. The terms suspect and criminal no longer mean anything. If we do not reject the classification of suspect being defined more and more broadly every day, you and your family, your friends, will be penalized, robbed, and imprisoned at a higher and higher rate by people who are doing so under color of authority, under the protection and force of the state, and under a profit motive. Taking your livelihood out of pure greed and calling it legitimate government business. You cannot call the cops when the cops are robbing you. It is no good to write your congressman when your congressman is robbing you. And they love to brainwash us. They talk about paying our debt to society. The criminal does not have a debt to society or to government. The criminal only has a debt to his victim. When was the last time you heard of a court taking a fine and giving it to any victim? Judges actually put a portion of the fines they take into their own pension funds. Would you say they have a conflict of interest here? When a judge sees you walk into his courtroom, he cannot see you. He can only see dollar signs. If we are ever to have justice in this country, we are going to have to look at the concept of crime very differently. We are going to have to insist that in order for something to be truly criminal, there must be a victim filing a complaint or claim. There must be an injury, damage, or loss caused to a human being which requires remedy. If there is no injured party, there is no crime, and there is no criminal. I know that our laws, codes, and regulations say differently, but the moral and legal principle on which our country was founded, if you have not caused injury, if you have not harmed anyone, you are innocent, and you may not be penalized. No injury, no crime. No crime, no penalty. Media propaganda says we are all criminals and we must be spied on, controlled, and penalized constantly so we will all behave ourselves and chaos will not erupt spontaneously. Education, law, and government has trained us to think that any behavior is criminal if there's a law, code, or regulation calling it that. Calling something criminal does not make it criminal, just as calling something fruit juice does not make it fruit juice. In order for you to have a crime, you must have an injury and the intention on the part of the criminal to cause that injury or some evidence of negligence where the injury should have been prevented. Believe it or not, rolling through a stop sign is not a crime. Speeding itself is not a crime unless the speeding is the direct and only cause of an accident. Whether or not speeding causes the accident, the crime is not speeding. The crime is causing the accident. Sometimes you can avoid a collision by speeding. Speeding itself is not a crime. By telling us that speeding itself is a crime, government takes hundreds of millions of dollars from drivers every year in most cases when no one was injured or damaged in any way. Sure, speeding is often hazardous, but the proper way to deal with that is to penalize people who cause an accident by speeding, not by penalizing speeding when there is no accident. Penalizing behavior for behavior's sake is simply a way to cast a huge net over society and penalize and rob millions of innocent people every day without providing any real deterrent or public benefit. It is pure theft and massive unjust government enrichment. Some countries have experimented with doing away with traffic laws altogether, and traffic accidents did not increase at all. 
What prevents accidents is good highway design, markings, signage, not highway pirates robbing you for your behavior. It's a simple human nature. It's stupidly obvious. People do not want to have collisions on the highway. We're going to try to avoid that, whether or not government is sending out squad cars of revenue collectors to nab us. If we're informed that texting and driving is a terrible hazard, we will adjust to that and try to keep from killing ourselves. We don't need laws. We simply need information. But just giving us information does not make government rich. Making government rich is the new and exciting fad that our government discovered for itself back about 30 seconds after government was created. The idea that society would be a chaotic, crime-infested hellhole unless you have police, government, and piles of laws is a ridiculous lie. The most peaceful civilizations in history were those that had no government, no laws, and no police. Most of us simply want to live in peace, and we do not need a police state to calm us all down. Yeah, we can be paranoid. We can fixate on all the dangers in life. We can allow a quasi-military assault force to make us all feel safer. By doing that, we are letting government pretend they can eliminate all problems in society by punishing and fining any behavior that they decide is risky or inappropriate. That is a major problem because that means we can be punished for doing anything the government calls risky or suspicious. The government can take our money by telling us we are behaving badly. Government has turned that into a growth industry. There's no limit on what government can call bad behavior. There's no limit to the amount of money they want to take from us. This has become a major problem for society. In case you have not noticed, government is out of control and you cannot manage your money freely without risking being put on some suspect list. This is a major defect in our civic structure. Our government can use its authority and monopoly on violence to enrich itself. We have been brainwashed into regarding everything government does as legitimate. It's no wonder they're taking our money. We're letting them. We're not objecting. We're not resisting that. Government, which should be challenged constantly, is hardly ever challenged because government tells us they're always right. Anyone can tell you they're right. Does that make them right? Never be suckered into the criminalization propaganda and mindset. Never view someone as a criminal for simply being called a criminal by government or for harmlessly disobeying a behavioral dictate made up by a bureaucrat. A few basic rules are always a good thing, but we are way, way past that now. It is not the business of government to make judgments on our harmless behavior, and government needs to be told that. Here's how to keep your perspective on who is and who is not actually a criminal. If there is no injury, no victim, no damage, no violation of rights, no loss of property or opportunity, then there is no crime and there is no criminal. Carrying a bag of marijuana is not a crime. Giving drugs to children is a crime because drugs are harmful to children and the harm can be seen and recorded as evidence. But unfortunately, when something can be harmful, government does not just criminalize the harm. They love to criminalize everything associated with the harm. So their net of fines and penalties can be cast much farther, and government power can be made absolute. Putting solar panels on your property without a permit is not a crime. But it's amazing the amount of criminalization we've accepted and now take for granted. Refusing mandatory state education of your child is not a crime. Exercising property rights is not a crime, such as refusing to pay property tax. Refusing to be enlisted as a slave is not a crime, such as assessing taxes on earnings from your own labor. 
Refusing cooperation or compliance with a public servant is not a crime, although if there is an immediate concern for public safety, compliance is probably a good idea. The point is you do not owe service just because government wants your service. You are not a criminal just because government or the law says you are. Government no longer operates on a moral foundation of right and wrong. Government now operates on a foundation of self-interest, self-protection, self-promotion, and senseless control of the public in completely excess and inappropriate ways. This may go against your view of how to make an orderly society. Nazi Germany was an orderly society. Order may be nothing more than evidence of tyranny. Order may be nothing more than the prohibitions on freedom, the elimination of rights, and the suppression of liberty. You are just as unsafe when things are too orderly as when they are disorderly. In fact, you are far more danger when the state is committing crimes against you than when we are all simply trying to get along on our own terms without state control. Civil forfeitures by law enforcement, the wealth that government outright steals from the public now exceeds all the money and property stolen by non-government thieves and criminals every year. Let that sink in. All the damage done by civilian property crimes in the nation is now exceeded by the damage done by supposedly legal civil forfeiture. Civil forfeiture is theft committed by the state, and all they had to do was pass one simple law saying that was okay. This is what happens when no one's questioning the legitimacy of government. We are no longer overseen by the limited and morality-bound government of the past. We are now overseen, ruled, you might say, by an enemy a very hostile and powerful enemy who has targeted what we earn and what we have for seizure by any means possible. And when you are the government, everything is possible. They have openly declared war on us by civil forfeiture, by unlawful searches and seizures when we use air travel, by mass surveillance on all of our digital devices, by IRS theft without due process, by taxing the most basic right, the right to own property. Government has declared you are nothing to government but a place from which to steal money. How safe will you feel when the police find a reason to suspect your car was used in a crime and they seize your car in a traffic stop? It happens every day and no one's even charged with a crime. They just take somebody's car. What would you think if that happened to your neighbor? We can turn against people we know just because government tells us to do so. Your neighbors, family, and friends, and even strangers on the street are not criminals unless they have intentionally caused injury, damage, or loss to another human being. They are not criminals just because a corrupt and greedy government calls them criminals. True criminals are a very rare thing. If there's no injury, damage, loss, or violation of rights, then there is no crime, no criminal, and no legitimate authority by the state to penalize, fine, tax, license, certify, obstruct, or prohibit anything. You are not made safer by allowing your government to punish everything in sight. We must learn to protect ourselves for a change and tell the government to stay out of our affairs. Only when we are all recognizing the dangers of statism and authoritarianism and demand that our government stay inside a small and well-defined box, can we stop and reverse the very obvious current trends towards state tyranny, control, and the wholesale impoverishment of society. Our government has now admitted that it conducts unlawful mass surveillance on every American. But our government does not prosecute itself for its crimes. Crimes committed by government are utterly without deterrent. When they are exposed as criminals, they don't even stop committing the crimes. Tell me this is not out of control. Through your credit cards, your smartphone, your household electric meter, on nearly everything you do, government is collecting 
a high resolution diary of your minute to minute life from the day you are born to the day you die. All they have to do is look at what you are doing and call it a crime and you are then owned, controlled, robbed, and persecuted by an out of control state apparatus full of amoral bureaucrats who simply want to take your stuff. Like magic, government can criminalize anything we do, but we must shove that magic genie back in the bottle. We must demand more affordable government, more ethical government, less authorized government, less government overall, and we must replace it with government that is more interested in providing service to us than enriching itself on us. We must make this a common theme in our daily activities. We must talk among ourselves to determine how we will accomplish this or attempt this. We have a lot of that work to do before we will ever get back to anything we can call a free country. Does this country belong to government or the people? We can clearly see that if we don't decide that ourselves and take some action on that decision, government decides that for us. And when they do that, we lose. Government will always take from us as much as we let them take. The only thing that will ever limit the size and greed of government is when we, you and I, all of us, stand up and say no more. If we don't start doing that soon, no more is exactly what we will have left. <laughs>